Plotting these two wave function solutions gives the top two images, while plotting psi star psi, meaning the probability density, gives the bottom two images. What we can see is that for psi plus, there is constructive interference in the wave function between the two nuclei, while for psi minus, there is destructive interference between the two nuclei. What this means is that the electron can be found between the two nuclei and psi plus. And because bonding represents a sharing of electrons, we call psi plus a bonding molecular orbital. In psi minus, the electron can never be found directly between the nuclei. Since the nuclei cannot equally share the lone electron, we call psi minus an antibonding orbital. Let's now examine the solutions we just solved for more closely. Recall the S integral, where S is equal to the integral over all space of psi star 1s of nuclei A times psi 1s of nuclei B. This is called the overlap integral. It quantifies how much each of the two nuclei centered 1s orbitals overlap. Its value is dependent upon the internuclear separation and increases as the nuclei move closer together. It ranges between 0, meaning no overlap, and 1, meaning perfect overlap. The overlap integral gives a good indication of bond strength, since high overlap means high ability for the electron to be shared, and low overlap means low ability for the electron to be shared. Keep in mind that it is an indirect measure of bond strength since the overlap integral should be weighed against the internuclear repulsion, which increases as the nuclei comes closer together. Furthermore, now that we know the energy of our two wave function solutions and which one corresponds to a bonding molecular orbital and an antibonding molecular orbital, we can draw molecular orbital diagrams. On the outside of these diagrams are the atomic orbitals of the two nuclei and in the middle is the molecular orbitals that occur when the two atomic orbitals overlap. The energies associated with each molecular orbital defines how high on the energy axis they go. In the figure, E plus and E minus are indicated. Since HAA and HAB are negative, and S ranges between 0 and 1, E plus will always be less than E minus. This follows with our expectation since E plus corresponds to a bonding orbital. The energy of the system should decrease when atomic orbitals overlap constructively. Conversely, when electrons start to populate antibonding orbitals, then the energy of the system should increase as we are populating states where there cannot be equal sharing of the electrons in the molecular orbital, resulting in a repulsive interaction. As we will see later, we can use these diagrams to qualitatively describe the strength of a bond between two atoms. Leaving H2+, we are now going to talk about multi-electron molecules. Multi-electron molecules must be solved numerically. This is because of the electron-electron interaction in the Schrodinger equation makes the differential equation impossible to solve analytically. The molecular orbital solutions to the Schrodinger equation can be used for, to describe bonding. Similar to the H2 plus case, Molecular orbitals can be constructed from a linear combination of atomic orbitals, which are then populated with electrons using the Pauli exclusion principle and Hund's rules. With molecular orbital diagrams, we can do a lot of analysis qualitatively. Let's continue our discussion of molecular orbitals by looking at H2. In the ground state, H2 will have two molecular orbitals, being psi plus minus is equal to the 1s orbital centered on the A nuclei, plus or minus the 1s orbital centered on the B nuclei. This framework follows what was previously shown for H2+. The two orbitals are denoted as psi plus and psi minus. Psi plus concentrates the electron density between the protons. This is due to a constructive interference of the two wave functions that represent the electrons in the 1s orbitals. Because the electron density is concentrated between the protons, it will be referred to as a bonding orbital. Psi minus excludes electron density between the two protons, and this is due to destructive interference of the two waves that represent the electrons in the 1s orbitals. Because the electron density is excluded between the protons, it is referred to as an antibonding orbital. Here are two illustrations that demonstrate the concentration of electron density between and away from the center of the two nuclei depending on if the orbital is bonding or antibonding due to constructive or destructive interference. Since the electron density is symmetric about the internuclear axis, 
meaning along the axis that goes through the two nuclei. Both are called sigma orbitals. Let's now look at the relative energies of bonding and antibonding orbitals in H2 in the ground state. Here we have two 1s orbitals on their own with an electron each. In the center is the bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals. The energies of the bonding and antibonding orbitals are predicted using the variational principle with the suitable trial wave function. From that calculation, we get a bonding molecular orbital and an antibonding molecular orbital. Since the energy of the bonding orbital is calculated to be lower, it stabilizes H2, while the antibonding orbital destabilizes H2. Prior to examining the p-based molecular orbitals, let's briefly return to the shape of the p-orbital. When sketching the shape, we can plot a cosine theta term on polar paper to get the familiar dumbbell shape. The cosine of angles between 0 and 90 degrees will result in a positive number, hence that region is denoted with a plus sign. The cosine of angles between 90 and 180 degrees are negative, so that region is denoted with a negative sign. We can think of this plus and minus signs as the wave that represents this orbital being in opposite phases, or that if the wave is up on the right-hand side, then it's down on the left-hand side. This has ramifications when 2p orbitals overlap from different atoms, as it determines if they constructively or destructively interfere. In general, p orbitals will have a higher energy than s orbitals. Given the orientation of p orbitals, two types of molecular orbitals formed from p orbitals exist. Let's assume that the z-axis is the internuclear axis, meaning that it goes through both nuclei. Then the pz orbital forms a sigma bond since the wave function solutions directly overlap. If the up part of both p orbitals overlap, they constructively interfere and a bonding orbital results. If the up part overlaps with a down part, then the wave function destructively interferes and an antibonding orbital occurs. Since we said that the z-axis is the internuclear one, then the px and py orbitals are perpendicular to this axis. They can form the other type of molecular orbital, pi orbitals. When these orbitals overlap constructively, a bonding orbital is formed, and if they overlap destructively, an antibonding orbital occurs. Expanding the basis set of atomic orbitals to include p orbitals, we can make molecular orbital diagrams for diatomic atoms using second row elements. Illustrated here are diagrams for F2 and O2. In both cases, the 2s orbitals interact to make bonding and antibonding orbitals, and the 2p, x, y, and z orbitals make bonding and antibonding sigma and pi orbitals. These molecular orbitals are filled with electrons from both atoms following the Pauli exclusion principle and Hund's rules. We can build up similar molecular orbital diagrams for other diatomic molecules. The electrons populate these molecular orbitals using Hund's rules and the Pauli exclusion principle. Following these rules, we can accurately predict the paramagnetic tendencies in diboron and oxygen molecules given their unpaired electrons. Also, notice that as the atomic number gets bigger, that the energies of these molecular orbitals tend to decrease. Most striking is that the energy of the sigma 2pz orbital drops below the bonding 2px and 2py pi orbitals at oxygen.